Yeah, it's playable on the floor right now. Go and try and play HoloLens. Yeah. Go and try and play anything on HoloLens. It ain't on the floor. It ain't on the floor. It ain't, it ain't there. It, it, you can't even play Minecraft with it yet. It's just, that was just... No, it's just a tech free. demo. Why doesn't anybody remember Connect and remember the the, the the thing about Natal and how yeah. Natal is the greatest thing since sliced bread and how uh, Kudo Sonoda was uh, was telling everybody that you got to get rid of the controller and Steven Spielberg came up and he was like the the one obstacle between video games and gamers is the controller we have to get rid of the controller and yes no, no so, be, again these people were not even oh I don't they weren't they were probably like still you know like drinking chocolate milk back then yeah. they weren't paying attention to games they didn't know what E3 was back then so they don't know any of that they don't know any of that so because no. what what year was that that was um it was 2006 no 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 no, no it no. was 2009 2009 2009 it was 2009 but that's so not that's too E3... far no no yeah yeah it's December 20 to zero nine yeah it was like it was E3 2009 yeah, yeah. so that was six oh, years ago about. Yeah, well, yeah, now... Imagine, if you're 15 now, if you're one of those guys you were posting and you're 15 now, you were 10 then, you didn't know what E3 was. Right, exactly. So you would have been 10 or 9 or 10. But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I understand that. But the thing is, like, okay, they know, and, like, the media, what we were talking about, the media figures, they know. Like, Colin Moriarty was there when Steven Spielberg said that. Yeah. Guy. Um, he was there when he saw Kudo Sonoda said, you can see how she moves her body around and yeah. reacts to the movement yeah, by the, of the right. screen. They, by the, the nature of the game, she's constantly moving around. Exactly. And it's it, he saw Milo, and, he's, and, and they were excited for Milo. Never came out. Ever. And it will Yeah, Milo, Milo turned into connectimals. Exactly. And um, it was a lie. It wasn't true. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, this is real. Well, you any well number one, anything that Peter Molyneux is involved in, is a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. Basically. It's a lie. Basically. It's, but, it's. I mean, like that goes across the board. Forget it. Forget Microsoft and Xbox. Anything that Peter Molyneux is involved with is a lie. Yeah, I think Molyneux means 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 uh, in English it means fabrication. It's like yeah, it's like it's false. That's what it means. Yeah, but you know, um, think about you think about how. They were able to pull off a successful Connect release because of false advertising. You don't think yeah. they're trying those same tactics again to get you to buy um, this new device? I forgot what it was called. I know that I know that it's um, the original name of it is Oculus Rift, but well, no, this is the thing. It's two different. Oh, texts. two different texts. Okay, right. Oculus Rift is its own thing, which right. is now owned by Facebook. But HoloLens is Microsoft's technology. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so yeah, I, I mixed those two up. Okay, um, Oculus Rift, guys, keep doing what you're doing. Don't. Well, Oculus Rift is another thing, but it's owned right. by. It was, Oculus Rift was its own company, and they got bought out by Facebook. That cannot be a not good be, thing. No, no, I don't want to play Castle Quest, 3D. It's not. Forget it. If Facebook bought that, it's not even going to be used for games. Farm, Farmville too. The way they the way they do things is they take new technology, they present it to gamers because we're really into tech and we are we're a high capacity of uh, early adopters. And then we'll come in, we'll do the marketing for them. Yeah, the yeah. same way that you and me sold so many PS3s by word of mouth, and we did. Mm -hmm. That's what they're counting on. It's like, why should we spend millions of dollars on this? Look, let's present this new technology to people who will be excited about it and do the marketing for us. Then, when it gets to mainstream, we'll turn it around to its real purpose that is not games. Yeah, exactly. And then we'll make the money. Then so they're gonna put this in, and and they're and they're gonna pretend like it's for games. It's not. Yeah. Well, and they're gonna use virtual reality for for you know social media. Exactly. And and that's the plan. I mean, and unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's an I see another gimmicky type add-on to the console that's detracting from the console. It's really is doing that, and and I like how I like how Sony did it because Sony focused on games. They, yeah, there was there was practically nothing other than games except for the f two minutes they talked about yeah um, PlayStation View, which is the TV service. Microsoft is yeah, and that PlayStation PlayStation View thing with a la carte TV. Is the yeah. future is the future of TV, and I see that happening. Like right now, um, I use Sling TV. Uh, I I have a it's sort of like an a la carte service, but you do have to buy channels in packages still. They're much shorter packages, 
and they're cheaper. They're like five bucks a package, but you could rearrange your package however you want it um, to fit your budget. You know, uh, PlayStation View is going to be a godsend to people who just want Cartoon Network to see Toonami or who just exactly. want... Right, or you want TNT so you can watch the uh, basketball game. Or, you know, you want this. It's going to be great for that purpose. And I, I know the cable titans don't like that. And I know Microsoft doesn't like that because they... Yeah, because they're all up in MSN, they're all up in which M is all up in NBC. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, they, so they yeah, they're up on that. They, they're, they're never going to have anything like that. Unless, you know, this uh, PlayStation View is very successful and it changes... The way cable companies do um, their well, but it's clear to see services. where these companies were going. Yeah. Because Microsoft was trying to put your TV right. and your existing cable, right, your existing cable and satellite provider through the Xbox onto your TV. Right. So they were working as partners with you know but, Infinity but, with X, Xfinity, Comcast, and all these people. They were working with Sony, saying screw them, buy one channel at a time. Exactly. They were working with gougers. Think of that. They were working with gougers to try to to try to bring your TV into everything into all in all in one unit so that you could pay for Xbox Live. You have to pay for Xbox Live in order to get your TV streamed to your Xbox, whatever however it works, but then you'll be ending up paying cable, Xbox Live a year and a bunch of other stuff you probably don't need. Yeah, because you can go get cable without bundling. No. Um, so, you know, it's like... The, going back to the virtual reality displays... I'm, I'm glad that Sony did the way that they did. And yeah, they should have. It's fine that way. Here, here's two minutes. This is all you need to, to, to see because through your television, you're not going to enjoy exactly. it. And you're not going to be able to really get the sense of what the product is. So they said, for everybody who is here... We're going to have demos on the showroom floor, and word of mouth is going to sell this device. Not because it's on TV. You know, it's like, it's trying to sell a pair of 3D glasses on a, on, on a commercial on TV, where the TV's a 2D TV. You're not... Yeah, and that's par partly why 3D yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> so, so here comes Microsoft, and they say, we have to show this thing because it's not even ready yet. Um, and we have to get people talking about it because this is all we got. Um, another gimmick, we want to get them to buy it, so let's show it to them. How are we going to show it to them? Okay, well, let's make a, let's, let's make a camera that has Oculus, or has, um, what's it called? I forget, I, the name is not catchy at all. Um, HoloLens? HoloLens. Um, and so that camera supposedly has HoloLens so we can see um, what's going on, uh, or what the person who was demoing it seeing with the Minecraft thing. How do we know that that wasn't a visual effect yeah i mean like, we, we're, we're taking their word for it right and the la which it could be fine if it wasn't for the fact that the last time we took microsoft's word for it they told us that milo yeah was, was, real, was real and that that wasn't that was real gameplay someone doing real stuff yeah and it t and then later on it came out and they're like well actually it wasn't yeah. and you know it doesn't really work that way no 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 a better example they showed us a video of a, of a kid standing in front of Kinect, yep. or Project Natal at the time, Natal. and Natal. scanning in his skateboard. Exactly. That functionality never came to light. It never it, came to it light. Never in any, in any way, shape, or form have you ever been able to scan an everyday item and put it into a game using Kinect in any way, shape, or form. I know. I know. It was all a, it was all a lie, and it was all made to try to get people in, excited for Kinect. When they changed the name from Connect from Natal to Connect, I knew something was up. And then remember before it came out, they were like, "Oh yeah, uh, Microsoft had to strip a lot of the processing power out of it just exactly, to get the price yeah. down." When has Microsoft ever been concerned about getting the price down? Look at look at how the Xbox One launched. For real, five hundred dollars. Nine. So you got to be telling me. I mean, you got to be kidding me if you're going to tell me that. They did that as a favor to the consumers, and then they rebranded it Connect. They rebranded it Connect simply because they didn't want people coming back at them saying, we can't do any of the things that you told us that we could do. Oh, and then Kudo will say, oh, yeah, but that's uh, Project uh, Natal. Uh, this is Connect. Legally, he's 
he's uh, completely guarded and shielded from any type of uh, it, lawsuit. It, it is, or false it is amazing. Or anything. Yeah. It, it is amazing that no one brings this up again. They don't because they know about it, but they're getting too many Microsoft kickbacks and too many things from, especially like Colin Moriarty, Greg Miller. You know, they're getting backing from these companies. They're getting dollars. They're getting ad dollars. You know, you can't. You know, you can't subscribe to their Twitch TV without spending five bucks. It, it just... I know, right? Yeah. And then, It's like, isn't that a little pretentious? I mean, I understand that they have to make a living, but it's like, so here, I want you to give me five dollars to yeah. pay me for you to listen to me talk and give yeah. you my own opinion. Yeah, and then... That you could absolutely form on your own. Right, and then so then, as, as you've already paid for my subscription... I'm going to tell you straight up that I don't like Uncharted 4 and I'm not going to talk about it. I want my money back. Even even though you even though you've paid me to talk about games yeah, yeah, at, exactly. a, at a games conference. Exactly. Exactly. That guy, you know what? He looks like a douche lord. And I'm going to I'm the just, lord of the douche. The lord of oh, the douche. lord of the douche. He takes care of yeah, he 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 oversees all the douches that are oh, dropping. The lord of douches. <laughs> And I think I think that the future for those guys are is it's just extremely dim. You know, we do this. We we do a podcast. We do, you know, it's no it's no surprise that we love talking about games and we we really enjoy um, the things that we that we do on our personal time as well as like when we record. Um, like I'll play Final Fantasy VII. You saw Evan Children last night. For real, okay, you yeah. did. You didn't see it because you wanted to talk about it today on the podcast and have like some homework project and do a report on it no you saw it because you loved it yeah and that and because i saw final fantasy 7 remake for real and that spurred you on you know i played a little final fantasy 7 today because i love it and you know yeah I, I have a nintendo handheld i play some mario kart and i play this and that here and there i was i was playing counter spy for real this afternoon or this evening whenever it was before we recorded i'm not Cause... yeah, yeah. We're not doing a yeah. on it or nothing, or, or we're not like forced to play it because we have to review it. I mean, we've tried all that stuff and it doesn't work. So I mean, yeah, it's, you it's can't not, force. You can't force this kind of stuff. You can't force it. Anybody, anybody can do what we do. Um, you know, you just have to be fortunate enough to be at the right time. Right with the you know the right the right ride right, right the white the correct wave of social like stigma. Like if right. if something happens. And you know that gives you that one video that gets you popular, and then everyone watches your old stuff. That's right. how it happens. Right. That's that's how it. That's how it. That's how. Or it, you could be us, where it never happens. <laughs> right. Or or you can apply for a, a magazine and write a couple of, of reviews, you know, and then get your name on those reviews, and then get your own little podcast and show. Well, not even because like that's so it's such a dime a dozen now. That, you know, there's a, there's ten thousand sites, yeah, each with forty writers. Each giving their opinion, it's like that only worked when there was GamePro, and yeah. there was EGM, and these people were like the authorities on on games because no one else was talking about it. And there was some back then, like um, now that you brought that up, like you brought the magazines up, there was like there was like this certain mystique, and even like man, I'll tell you, even there was like a romantic aspect to that, for me. I mean, not like romantic, like I'm not, I'm not gonna like sleep with my magazine collection, but. I'm just saying, like, well, it depends you know, what collection it is. <laughs> yeah, right? keep going, keep going. <laughs> like, I, I, on that. this is the ledge, George. This is the ledge. So, um, yeah. And please, no name drops. Like, okay. <laughs> but <laughs> so, so yeah. So it's like I, I'll go back and I'll look at those magazines. And back in the day, in the early '90s, and up until before the millennium, these people used to go by code name. It wasn't. It was their writer name. It wasn't like their real name. So we had like GamePro had Scary Larry, and they had uh, Spectre, and they had um, a whole bunch of other people who went by char- uh, by names, and then they have character caricatures of their profiles. Like Scary hmm. Larry was an actual kind of like zombie type guy because he loved Resident Evil and all this stuff, and he would he was the I think he was the editor at the time, but he would also you know input stuff and and review and talk about games. On the, in the magazine, and there was other people. There was like um, I've got um, Major Mike, and a whole bunch of other people who went without going without using their real names. 
and it it brought it brought that sense of like well they're on a on a totally different plane you know you can trust you can trust them because they're not like us they they they're real hardcore gamers they they know what they're talking about you know they for for some reason that's the connection i made with them like this is the official news you know it's coming from them and even though there was a behind this persona it still it still was very relevant and very like just to me it, it really um um trying to struggle for for the right word but to me it, it showed me how 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 much i can trust someone who i hmm. don't even know yeah because of the sincerity of their review and the way they wrote it you know i, I no, not necessarily need to know who you really are just let me let me see your review let me let me let me read it i i don't want to promote you but your company that you're working for you know nowadays it's like you get like um Andre the Black Nerd, and he's going to talk about Transformers, uh, the comic book movie remade for 2018. And he'll talk about it, and everybody's like, oh, I saw Andre's video. Andre, 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 Andre. It's not about Andre. It's about the stuff that we love. It's about the games. Yeah. Yeah. It's about the and movies. It's we've not lost about... that somehow. Yeah, we've These lost... personalities yeah. ha ha have taken over, even though... Which makes no sense. It's like, the content is what is the important part we should be excited because we're getting a, a, a new transformers game by platinum games exactly but instead you know oh did you see i justine's video it's like about yeah it was like the uh, and about at that point the conversation just dies because <laughs> you said you said the buzzword exactly and it, when whatever follows it about whatever it means absolutely nothing right well yeah nowadays it's, it's more like internet personalities and what they have to say and then that's it and and let's not let's not really care about the games but let's watch colin's video on youtube about games or let's watch you know adam sessler's review of the game um and let's yeah because because it's become that we want to hear this person's opinion yeah. because they were presented to us as someone who knows whatever i mean it all started yeah. with it started with tv it started with podcasts. Yep. You know, the X play was oh, M Morgan Webb and, and Adam Sessler, and they're presented to us as the hosts who know about video games. And if they don't like something, it's not good. And if they like something, it is good. Exactly. People then we had the podcasts, yeah. the Beyond and and Three Red Lights and mm -hmm. all this other stuff, Nintendo Voice Chat and all the other yeah. Giant Bomb podcasts. All these people who. Because we listen to them and we think we know them, now we oh yeah 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 so and so is this and this and that. So when they say something is good or is not, it is good or it's not. Never mind that I have to make my own opinion based on my own experience with the game. Yeah. That's gone. If someone who I quote unquote trust says it's good, then it's good. So I'll blindly buy it because they say so, or I will blindly ignore it because they say so. Right. And and the contrast between like what I was talking before about the magazine was. Um, how, and how magazines were presented before was like, you know, it, it was it was um, in a way not emphasizing the importance of the person who wrote it, but rather emphasizing the importance of how great the game was and how, you know, making your own opinion on it was the important thing. You know, because you can go and say, oh, oh I, I was reading GamePro and Scary Larry said that this game is whatever. And people are like who the heck scary who the heck is scary Larry? Exactly. You know, no one no one pays attention to the bylines. They just right. read the content. Just read the content. You know, if 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 the review is somewhat good uh, appealing to you, and the gameplay structure is kind of like what you want to play, and it's something that maybe you want to try, you know, give it a try. You could have rented it back in the day, or you could have done whatever, you know, to try it, and then okay, great. But you don't go back to that one figure. You go back to the whole the magazine as a whole. Or you try another magazine, but nowadays people just stick with that one person, and whatever he says goes, and whatever he does not like, you don't like. It's it's the popularity contest. It's like high school all over again. It's the internet has become high school. That's just it. it unfortunately, it's devolved into such a popularity contest and such like a a, a, a peeing contest, if you will. 
Um, yeah. as, as far as like these personalities and what they think and who's better than what and or, or <clears throat> what their opinion is on who is better and what not to do, what they don't do, you know, it, it's just ridiculous. And people are not paying attention to the games. It's so bad that Sony had the best press conference ever. Probably ever, yeah, of in at least of the decade. Of the decade. Well, I don't know. Well, they, I don't know because between this and 2013, they yeah. have had the, probably the best conference of the decade. Right. And it's being pushed down so much that 24 hours later, no one's talking about it. Right, exactly. It's being but us. Being def- it has been deflated so much. But the problem is this: no one, no one is strong enough to stand up and say, "No, this is wrong." I don't care what you say, Greg Miller. I really loved Uncharted 2, and I thought that it was better than Mass Effect 2, and I've played Mass Effect 2, and I it sucks. That's my opinion of it, though. But that's, that's you know, he, he'll probably say good for you, you hold that opinion, but I don't. That's fine. You know, that's yeah, okay. But, 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 that's but fine. we're not, we're not, you know... CEO of oh, kind yeah, of funny yeah. games. Oh yeah, I know, I know that. Which which makes you a a, a better gamer. Yeah, it just makes you a better person somehow. You know, I just don't agree with that. And and um, every you know, you can hold your own opinion. If someone says, "Hey, Mass Effect Two is better," you liked it. Well, great. Talk to me about some of the points that you liked about it. I bet they can't even come up with one because they just wanted to join in the conversation and say something stupid. Yeah, it's it's just a, oh god. It doesn't make any sense. Time. Uh, 21. Uh, 20 oh, man. Jump so Street. Dang. So, so, let's talk about some games. Let's talk go. about predictions. Predict- <laughs> now that the rants out of the part two we opened up with pure hate. Hatred. <sighs> All right, like, I can feel yeah. your anger. So, uh, man, that game looked really good. Uh, we saw Horizons. Yeah. Um, I am very excited about that. I mean, it's guerrilla games, so you can you can imagine the kind of story that we're gonna get based on how they do the storytelling they do with Killzone. Yeah. Um, but this this whole idea of of it's supposed to be, and I, I saw an interview with Herman Hulst, uh, who with Jeff Keighley, um, where he was saying that this is is it's the post post apocalyptic section. Yeah. So there was there was the highly advanced uh, civilization cities, blah 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 vehicles electricity like skyscrapers something happened that's all gone the trees and everything have taken over and it's now a thousand years after that event wow and so humans are coming back some of them are apparently not all of them are are as tribal as the one we saw Uh Um, some of them are more uh, more advanced depending on where so obviously you're going to come in contact with those other tribes it just says that that the main character's tribe was supposed to be the first one who, you know, came back to this area. Wow. And uh, and now the place is overrun with plants and with, you know, robot animals, <laughs> <laughs> which is so crazy. But but it, it's cool. It to me it looks like because I mean they show you that you're not using a gun, you're using a bow and arrow, so it's still kind of primitive. I mean you might get other weapons later on because that technology clearly exists in the world. But what I got from watching the the trailer over, um, the main character is hunting, but she's not actually hunting the machines. Um, what's happening was when she got past the other one, the other machines were grazing in the field, and it seems like somehow what they do is they they absorb or they they chew or they eat, consume organic matter, and convert it into you know like a chemical energy. Which was being stored in this little tanks because she comes up. She's like, it's it's thing tank should be full about now because like as it's eating, the little green tanks on his back fill up. Right. And those green tanks is what she was harvesting to get, you know, I guess it's an energy source. Yeah. Or a source of resources or somehow. So that's what she was getting. So, but the the key, the key point was that she wasn't killing that animal. When she shot the th- green things off of its back, it it got up and ran away. It, it's I don't know if it, if it doesn't even seem to be injured. It's more like, you know, how we would shear a sheep, but the sheep is pretty much unharmed. Yeah. So that was a cool thing. It's like, well, all right, your so your point in the game isn't to just go around and kill robot dinosaurs, because that would be too simple. But you know, you're you're trying to to get things from them without killing them, and you're you're essentially farming them for resources. 
at least some of them. Yeah. And then, you know, big old Godzilla T-Rex shows up, and you got to fight him, and he's got to get killed. Yeah, that was but, um But you know what? Um, there was a part where they showed the T-Rex fight, and um, there was a part within that fight that she blew off one of its, like, uh, machine guns. Yeah, and then used it. And you used it. So that means that, that means that like, at that point in the demo, your, char- your, your character, which looks really tribal and primitive, um... On the other hand, could be very smart, knowing the technology and knowing how to use the weaponry. Yeah, so that's true. The bow and arrow is probably just a silent weapon, a tried yeah. and true. But there's probably other weapons that you can use that, and that are more technologically advanced. But is uh, I heard some, uh, uh, somebody say um, in the comments that it's finally a monster hunter for PS4. That's true. Yeah, it kind of does look like that. Yeah. Which, but Monster Hunter with clearly a better story. Oh yeah, well, well with actual, like yeah, actual story. Uh, Monster Hunter to me always felt like an online game, like an MMO or something, that was stripped down and turned into a single player and then given online options. But yeah, but man, the 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 game looks great. Uh, yeah, it does. Anybody who hates it, I'll tell you this: just go throw yourself off a bridge. Um, much. speaking of off a bridge. The Last Guardian. The Last Guardian. Oh my God. The Last oh, Guardian. Man. It's that. It's 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 here. It's here and and it, it still has that team eco feel to it. Yeah. That co. It, it really is about friendship or, and cooperation and like, how. Or like Rich River View Tech USA Team Ico. What a crackhead. Like, why crack didn't now. why didn't they follow through on that death threat? I know they should, they should. Like really, I mean, like they do everything else. Uh, Anonymous <laughs> has time to shut down the PlayStation Network, and and Lizard Squad has sh- time to shut down Xbox Live and PSN and blah 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 and whatever. Yeah. But no one took the time to actually go through with one little death threat. Oh. It's like so if I say that one little mayor will die, well then everybody loses their minds. <laughs> it's like come on, man. It, it's just yeah, I, I, that whole situation with him and um, him and and Lizard Squad and all that. Uh, it is. It's just. It makes me laugh, because, you know, it's he 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 him taking that so seriously that he actually called the police. It was it, to me. It, it shows he's a punk coward. Yeah, it shows hiding how behind he, a YouTube camera. Exactly how, right. how cowardly he is. Um, just show up at like, the, because no, if you listen up. to him, yeah. If he listens, if you listen to him on his things, he's, he talks like he's so oh, yeah, or oh, he's like he's such a big dude, yeah, and yeah. you know he's so confident or whatever. But someone threatens to kill you, and you whine to the cops, to the popos. First like, thing you do, man, is like if you were that hard, you'd be like, yo, all right, meet me outside. I know. If you really that hard, go Charles Bronson, man. Come on. What's what? Why not? Just show up. Like just show up and see what happens. Like, okay, um, this just goes to show his um, maturity level. 95% of the times, if you see something in a comment box on YouTube and it's a threat against your life, 95% of the time, it's just some kid putting a comment in the box. It's like, seriously, I don't, I don't know why people read comments on YouTube anymore. YouTube is like the, YouTube comments is like the absolute cesspit. I know. Of social media right now, it's worse than Facebook. I know. It's worse than than well, Twitter's not even that bad, really, but yep. it's way worse than any. I don't think there's anything worse than 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 YouTube comments right now. Yeah. I mean, if if Lizard if if Lizard Squad listens, if somebody from Lizard Squad listened to this and was like, "Oh, I don't like how those noobs are talking about us," all this stuff. Uh, well, they're gonna have to fly to another continent to try to get you. Because <laughs> Pretty much, exactly. Pretty much. Like because we're we're being up, we're uploading this from another continent, and we're not 